Uh, greetings, my Canadian friends and colleagues. Uh, first of all, let me thank my good friend, Dr. Kevin Washka, for this kind invitation to present the Canadian Digestive Disease Week Richard McKenna Memorial Lecture. I'm grateful for this opportunity and let us begin. At the outset, I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Dr. John Storline, Mr. Charles Butt, Ms. Angela Deal for their support, as well as my institution, the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. I do not have any conflicts of interest to disclose. Now coming to the title of my talk for the 2021 McKenna Memorial Lecture, Think outside the endoscopy suite to teach endoscopy. So, let me start with a case to make the point. Here is an endoscopist who is trying to resect a polyp. In order to do it, he needs to figure out first whether the polyp is benign or not. Second, can he cut it completely or not? And third, whether he can cut it safely or not. And, has he, and as he processes the information in his mind, his trained assistant, who learned the skills on the job, is also figuring out what all equipment is needed for the next steps and be ready. All these steps are part of what we call cognitive aspects of endoscopy. Then, cutting, the execution of the cut is the technical or motor skill of endoscopy. If you allow me, we could simplify endoscopy training into cognitive aspects of endoscopy training and technical aspects of endoscopy training. I would like to set this scene to present two important topics. Number one, how to teach cognitive aspects of endoscopy to a larger audience beyond the confines of endoscopy suite. Number two, how to train endoscopy technicians before they join us by developing a dedicated training program in a community college similar to what surgical techs go through nowadays. In 2008, Hurricane Ike devastated my institution in Galveston. For three months, we could not work. Then I started practicing in a community hospital along with my com colleagues during the weekends and I realized the lack of quality in endoscopy support, tech support in that hospital. That kept on bugging me. If you don't have the right support in terms of tech support, you cannot really perform well. So I felt a need to develop formal educational program for endoscopy techs, similar to what surgical techs undergo. And I pitched this idea to the chancellor of the Houston Community Colleges in 2015 in my own personal email. It did not even go from my MD Anderson email. It went from my Gmail account. He responded, and he's been very kind to respond, and introduced me to the president of the Houston Community College in the Texas Medical Center. I met with uh, Dr. Phil Nicotera, president of the Houston Community College, along with nurse, senior nurses in the medical center who partnered with us to develop the program. He is a pediatrician by training and became an educator he readily bought on to this idea. And then the community college arranged for a DACOM project, that is development of a curriculum survey with the help of 10 technicians, two from each of the different hospitals and ambulatory surgical centers in Houston. They spent two days 
And uh, here is a summary. As you can see on the left side, you can appreciate what an endoscopy assistant or a tech does. Everything on the blue on the left side, from setting up the procedure, assisting the procedure, using different accessories, and then breaking down the room followed by endoscopy, endoscope disinfection. They do a lot. They'll do a lot of procedures, use a variety of tools, and need to have a lot of knowledge and skill sets. And it was mind-blowing to the community college uh, personnel that there was no formal education and all the technicians learn on the job. And then we formed a, an advisory committee which involved endoscopists, nurses, technicians from different institutions in the Texas Medical Center. We met every month for almost two years. You may be wondering why it took two years. I don't know the answer. I wondered whether the president of the community college was testing about whether we really meant it when we approached him with the idea. Finally, we developed the curriculum and the curriculum was finalized after two years of monthly meetings. It was approved by the community college and later the Texas Board of Higher Education and Southern Association of Colleges and Schools approved it. You need that type of approval before a community college could start a fresh new program. And we offer this to the high school graduates. They go through 35 semester hours of training, including hands-on training in various endoscopy centers under the supervision of senior techs, seasoned techs. We are very fortunate to start this program in, a, in the state-of-the-art new facility, a brand new building that costed $95 million. We will be starting later this year. We were supposed to start in 2020, but COVID pushed us back. This is a beautiful facility with the state-of-the-art lecture halls, hands-on training rooms. And as you can see here, there are at least five different components, art of teamwork, endoscopy technology and theory, fundamentals of aseptic technique, EGD, colonoscopy, and enteroscopy, ERCP, US, and bronchoscopy. And I'm working with an educator, Ms. Sanji Suresh, and a medical illustrator, Ms. Angela Deal. You have seen some of her diagrams in this uh, talk to create the learning material. We want to make it fun for the students to learn. And we follow this uh, pathway. Illustrated material followed by post-test to impart the knowledge and video demos, checklists, and competency tests to teach the skills and test the skills. It's also interesting to know that as you develop these programs, you have to have a lot of legal contracts for the community college to place their students as interns in different centers in the medical center. And we have all got those things taken care. In a few years, we will know whether this experiment paid off or not. In summary, I hope this lecture helps you think outside the box about different ways we can help our colleagues and our teammates. It does take time. The longer it takes, the longer you will have fun. And with your permission, let me dedicate this lecture that I prepared to my mentor and my good friend, Dr. Peter Kelsey, who excited, who excited me to think outside 
the endoscopy is sweet to teach. And uh, let me thank you all for your time. I wish I was there in person celebrating the presidency of my good friend. Thank you.